गुड इवनिंग एवरीबडी सभी का आज की महफिल में हार्दिक स्वागत है आज फर्स्ट फ्राइडे फोरम की हमारी एक और सभा यहाँ आपके सामने है और उसमें आज हम लोग सुनने वाले हैं एक बहुत ही कमाल की शख्सियत को आर्किटेक्ट अमन सोहल जी आर्किटेक्ट के साथ ही बहुत सारी कला जुड़ी होती है लेकिन जो खास तौर पे अमन सोहल जी हैं एक ऐसी शख्सियत हैं जिन्होंने कला के अंदर और भी बहुत सारा काम किया है तो आज उनको सुनना उनका काम देखना उनसे चर्चा करना हमारे लिए बहुत ही अच्छा अनुभव होने वाला है इन्हीं शब्दों के साथ मैं सबसे पहले भट्टी साहब को इनवाइट करूंगा ताकि वो सोहल जी के बारे में दो बातें कहें और उसके बाद फिर वो माइक और मंच जो सोहल जी के हवाले करें ताकि हम उनको सुन पाएँ भट्टी साहब पहले आप थैंक यू अमन सोहल हमारे कॉलेज का चंडीगढ़ कॉलेज ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर का ग्रेजुएट है और एक से ज़्यादा चीज़ें करता है ये इसका नेचुरल इंस्टिंक्ट था ऐसे तो काफ़ी देर तो जो थोड़ा चक्कर में रहा काफ़ी लोग कहने लगे भी एक काम ही करना चाहिए ये क्या होता है वो क्या होता है तो वो कुछ डिस्कशन मेरे साथ करता रहा तो उससे उसको थोड़ा क्लियर हो गया and he has started pursuing more disciplines than one to usme ek to watercolor painting hai jo bahut acha usne improve kar liya dusra music hai a flute ka iske wife classical music mein phd kar rakha hai usne to music ka mahol to ghar pe hai lekin isne flute choose ki hai to karta rehta hai to mere hisab se kafi usme develop kar liye Uh, जो इसमें सेंट्रल थीम है वो ये है कि जो भी चीज़ें हम करना चाहते हैं वो अपनी मर्जी से नहीं करते इसलिए क्रिएटिविटी दब जाती है क्योंकि जो नहीं करना चाहते वो ये बताते रहते हैं कि मत करना ये मत करना तो मैंने ये ढूंढा है कि यू हैव टू डिसाइड इट फॉर योर सेल्फ वट यू वॉन्ट टू डू एंड हाउ यू वॉन्ट टू लिव और क्यों कर रहे हो कैसे कर रहे हो और उसमें ये बात निकलती है कि यू आर नॉट डूइंग इट फॉर एनी वन एक्सेप्ट योर सेल्फ जब ये हो जाता है तो क्रिएटिविटी उजागर हो जाती है और उसमें फिर आपको किसी की कंपनी की जरूरत है नहीं पड़ता एज डिफरेंस है और आई एम वेरी हैप्पी के शोइंग सम ऑफ हिज वर्क्स एंड शेयरिंग हिज कन्वेक्शन वाई ही इज डूइंग मोर थिंग्स देन वन आई एम श्योर यू विल एंजॉय इट नॉट ओनली एंजॉय इट गो बैक कंसिडरिंग सिमिलर अप्रोच फॉर योर ओन लाइफ अभी मुझे कहना एक ज़रूरी और बात है कि अग्रवाल साहब इज़ ए मैथमेटिशन ऑफ नेशनल रिप्यूट उन्होंने सजेस्ट किया था कि आप जो कर दे उसमें जो स्पीकर है उसके बारे में और जो बोलना है उसका एब्सट्रैक्ट हो तो बहुत यूज़फुल रहेगा तो वो मैंने कर दिया और उनको बता दिया और बड़े खुश हुए तो साथ वो कहने लगे कि अमन का लिखा हुआ फ्लूट प्ले करेगा करता है तो मैं सजेस्ट करता हूँ कि ही शुड क्लोज हिज प्रजेंटेशन विद ए फ्लूट रिसाइटल ब्रीफ सा और मुझे खुशी की बात है कि माई एल्डेस्ट डॉटर हु इज़ ए वेरी ब्रिलियंट आर्किटेक्ट एंड ऑलराउंडर बेंगलोर से ज्वाइन किया उसने नविता और शर्मा साहब आ गए हमारे पुराने और लोग भी आ जाएंगे लेट एस स्टार्ट नो ओवर टू अमन गुड इवनिंग एवरीबडी i hope i am audible and i am uh, everybody can see me properly i am going to switch on to my presentation please let me know if everybody can see that dr bhati can can you see this ha uh, we can okay wonderful so i'll be uh, uh, starting my presentation now so uh, first of all i would like to extend my thanks to dr bhatti for considering me uh, for the second time for this monthly interaction program first friday forum i happen to be sharing my experiences before covid when i got a chance to speak at this uh, platform uh, so 
also i want to extend my thanks to dr arun bansal for the wonderful initiative and making this wonderful poster so the talk uh, for today it's called methods and relevance of practicing a parallel expression so when i was thinking what exactly should i talk on this i thought this uh, topic is of a very high significance and i personally feel that i am probably not uh, maybe experienced or old enough to be talking on a subject of such a high substance and significance so whatever you hear me talking on this subject is based and built upon my past 10 to 15 years of experience uh, in the journey of trying to find the connects between my expanded interests so uh, i will share whatever best i can share with you for the presentation today i was in this dilemma if i should be presenting my works or should i be sharing my uh, thought processes so what i am choosing to do today is since we have listeners from diverse uh, in interests to keep the subject very generic and uh, general so that everybody can come in and participate i have chosen to uh, jot down some of my thoughts which i will be presenting them uh, slide by slide and you know building upon those uh, bullet points and i will uh, try and restrict my conversation to not more than 20 25 minutes maybe maximum 30 uh, after that i will invite people to please step in and share their point of views and i will certainly as uh, suggested by dr bhatti will conclude with my flute recital also try and demonstrate some of my flute interpretations uh, that i found them found as a connect between architecture and music so beginning with methods and relevance of practicing a parallel expression a discourse on how and why practicing a parallel expression helps one explore diverse perspectives about a discipline which otherwise could not be internalized this is relevant to those who always wish to practice more than one discipline but were dis discouraged by the conditioned system of the society now why did i choose to talk on this subject first of all questioning the conditioning of the childhood upbringing since childhood i observed that uh, we are continuously fed with this thought that you must do one thing properly and do not you know indulge yourself into multiple things because if you do so many things you will not end up doing anything properly so just keep doing one thing then i i pondered upon this thought and uh, this this question remained in my head uh, until very recently when i met dr bharti and he encouraged me to read his book so i want to begin uh, my presentation by saying that the book that dr bharti encouraged me to read which is written by himself it's called an odyssey into mind after reading that book my thoughts that a human mind is capable of doing multiple tasks it got reinforced and i had no doubts left in my mind so uh, this is uh, this is something that i wanted to uh, begin with uh, trying to understand the conditioning of our childhood upbringing food for the body food for the soul uh i believe the human body is structured so wonderfully that ever since a child is born and the child cries uh the mother tries to feed the child with food not wanting to understand if the child really wants food or something else now since the body is conditioned with having uh, food for three times a day we grow up in such a system that without understanding consciously if we want to eat or not just because uh we have been made to understand that we need to eat three times a day uh we forget to understand what is the conscious mind telling us but what is very clear is that if you whatever you feed your body with the body will demand the same thing you feed your body with eating three times a day the body will demand food but what about the food for the soul i believe this is something that we miss as a society from the very initial days if there is something called as food for the soul for me that is art and one can actually practice art in diverse forms the more you feed with art in your body the body will start demanding art from outside to be fed in and this satisfies the hunger for the soul so basically i just wanted to introduce 
myself from the beginning. I'll be talking very briefly about uh, myself, the start of this journey of trying to find the answer of uh, this relevant uh, subject and topic of today. When I graduated in the year 2009, I was in an absolute dilemma of whether I should continue practicing architecture or not, because by then I had developed uh, expanded interests outside architecture as well. I was keenly interested to know music. I was keenly interested to know visual arts like watercolor paintings. And I, my father, who is a Hindi poet and Punjabi poet, also got me excited. How, what is this real art of writing poetry? And what is this form of poetry that within a couple of lines or couplets, one can actually reveal the entire mystery of the world? So that's how the journey started. But then uh, one fine day, one elderly gentleman said that you do not have to decide you which craft or which art you want to pick. So he said that you continuously keep on doing what you want to do. Whatever has to leave you will leave by itself. So you don't decide to pick. So then I continued to do that. And then that helped me define the path. So I waited for God's hints and God's clues before I could actually pick what I want to do. So over the next three to four years, I continued doing what all I was interested in. After a few years, I had some really interesting results. And the results were that whatever interests I was practicing, I was slowly becoming better at all of them. This was enough for me to feel encouraged and continuously keep on doing it. After many years ahead, I realized something unique had started happening. I could actually understand the reasons why one craft is becoming better. And it was not only the fact that I was continuously practicing that art form, but also I could see that one craft is helping the other craft develop finely. Now, this is something I call as catalyst forming. And I was very curious to know why these connects are happening. Because I am uh, continuously involved in understanding architecture that my flute playing was becoming better. Because my watercolor painting indulgence was becoming better, I was feeding myself by painting every day, every weekend, that my interest in architectural sense and architectural space making became uh, different. So, so these were the uh, revelations that I happened to discover. Now I will come to connecting the dots. When all of this happened, then eventually one fine day, I started to start my own architectural practice in 2016 called Forum Madhveta. Over the past uh, 15 years, I am involved in architecture and I have been doing my independent architectural practice for the past seven years. And there was something uh, very interesting that I discovered that while I'm making my architectural spaces, my space planning is not disconnected from the play of natural light. And this is not only because I have read architects who would play with natural light, but it was also because I was actually trying to create real-time watercolor images through architectural space making. For me, what magic water does on a sheet of watercolor paper is the same as natural light falling from one end of the uh, corner of a space to the other that brings gradation of texture. How else was it possible if I would not play with natural light? So my perspective of looking at space planning was really impacted by the way I was doing watercolor paintings. It would not have been possible if I was exclusively practicing one craft. Then I understood, just like visual arts has got principles of arts, architectural principles and visual art principles were almost the same. It is only the technique that is making them different from each other. In the, both the forms of arts, we are creating a bigger composition and we are creating smaller multiple compositions. I will not go into depth of the connects between the art forms because for the presentation today, I want to keep things very generic and just appear as if igniting 
your thoughts. So I'll be picking one examples and sharing my thoughts. Then, since I was parallelly uh, learning to play Indian classical flute mu music, I understood what the interpretation of mean in architecture. Uh, if everybody can see me, can I take this opportunity to demonstrate flute music before I conclude uh, and explain my connect with architecture? Is that okay? Uh, sure. Okay. So this is something that I have uh, not done before and I have not found this in any book of architecture or music. So this is, this is my flute, which is a bamboo flute. Uh, on E scale. I will try and share my connects between architecture and music on a very uh, singular level. I have tried to build upon these connects between music and architecture, but for today I will be sharing only one connect that I discovered. I was, uh, I want to share with everybody, there happened to be a, a great American architect, Frank Lloyd Wright, and he spoke about breaking the box. So he said, why should a house planning be only made up or made of compartmentalization of spaces when the spaces can actually fuse into each other? So you do not really understand when, when do you translate from one space to the other. We call this seamlessness of spaces or we call it fluidity of spaces. So I'll switch from here to Indian classical flute music when during the initial days, in Indian classical music, we are made to understand what is a mean. A mean in Indian classical music is basically a transition from one note to the other. For example, I hope everybody can hear the flute properly. Transiting from one note to the other without making use of mean. A mean is a slower transition from one note to the other. For example, basically a slow transition from one note to the other. So considering a note as a volume or as a space, this was a very clear indication for me what Frank Lloyd Wright could have been trying to explain. Here, you don't really try and uh, understand one note as one note because the notes are fusing between one to the other. Now, if you do not use the mean, then the composition appears very, uh, very static. In comparison to this, the music goes like We'll take a break from a regular conversation. So this was only to suggest my connect between music and architecture. I will go back to my presentation now. So like I explained the connect between mean and architecture, likewise, I started writing poetry uh, ever since COVID started. 
I am only a beginner, but I have written close to 100 poems of my caliber. I am hopeful that it, the standards of poetry will grow. But sheer writing poetry made me understand that it was because that I was practicing playing music that started helping me write poetry. This also had a very strong connect with what Dr. Verti once told me that poetry is nothing but music injected into prose. And when, when I started putting this into application, I understand that it so makes so much sense to myself. Now I would like to share a few inspirations that helped me understand why connecting uh, different thoughts or different expressions makes all the sense to me. I had a good fortune to work with the architect Doshi, uh, who during one of his talks, uh, he explained something which is very interesting. Before I do that, I would like to mention that architect Balakrishna Doshi happens to be one of the celebrated architects in the country, and I got a chance to work with him. He passed away this year at the age of 95. So when I worked with him in the year 2010 and 11, he said, you see, when you speak a language or you speak more than one language, uh, you can easily communicate your thoughts in one language. But anybody in this country can speak minimum two, three or four languages. So if that is possible, we can also indulge into different activities. So he used learning a language as a metaphor to understand the multiplicity of human endeavors. On another day, Dr. Doshi uh, was asked by one of us the architects that how do you manage to do so many things at the same time? Because Dr. Doshi also was one of the reference points for me, whom I saw in getting engaged in teaching, practicing architecture, and education. So he said, he gave a very beautiful example one day. He said, let's say, let's say if you have, uh, he, so he asked every one of us, he said, do you, do you like your mother? So everyone was like, okay, yes, we like our mother. He said, when you grow up, you get married and you have kids. Do you like your family? So everybody said, yes. So then he said, do you stop loving your mother? So everybody said, no. So he said, do you wait for somebody from outside to come and tell you how do you manage love amongst everybody? So we said, no. So he said, the reason is that when you consider everything that you love as a part of yourself and not as a part of the outer self, then you will somehow manage you know, practicing love amongst everybody. So this was something beautiful that I thought I would share. On a recent uh, interaction with my wife, he, she explained me something that is written in Gurbani. Uh, I personally, I'm still in the process of understanding Gurbani, but this is one quote that she narrated to me and it made my life so very simpler. Gurbani says, Jo Brahmande so pinde, Jo khoje so pave. What exists in this world exists inside me. The one who tries to discover, finds it. So I just wanted to share a few inspirations that in the past 10 to 15 years helped me understand the methodology of bringing everything together. After this, in this slide you can see I've written Jack or a master. This is something that I happen to discuss also with Dr. Bhatti and uh, the inferences out of this discussion I would like to share with you all. So I was in discussion with sir and I asked him, what does this mean, Jack or a master? So I created an interpretation for myself. For me, being a Jack of all trades and not being master of one, is basically an idea that leads to success in life. But I also feel this statement is very relative in nature. It is relative to time, which is more Einsteinian in nature and not Newtonian, which, which talks about absolute values. Now, we often get uh, defeated by this thought, Jack or a master, and we continue to do only one thing at one time. But if you see it a little differently, relatively, this statement could actually be very relative to time. Being jack of a trade 
is basically a transitional state of being. So you can actually choose to continue to practice whatever you want to practice. And maybe in the offing, God has in store for you to be master of everybody. Dr. Bhatti said beautifully that it is only uh, because that one guy who could not train his own mind to become master of so many trades that he wanted nobody to become a master. So, so this is something that I wanted to share that everybody uh, whosoever is listening, especially the students of art architecture, that do not get bogged down by this statement. Now, what are the methods that we can follow? So what I will do now is I will share some of the methods that I try to follow in order to continuously uh, practice the interest that I had developed. First is multiple personas, no baggage. Nowhere God has written that just because I have a degree in architecture that I am supposed to produce buildings. So I decided that I will not identify myself with one singular persona but multiple personas. So this gave me the courage to discover things within and an experience of feeling light. So when I do not carry this baggage of identifying myself with a persona, suddenly it makes me feel lighter. Hypothetically, when, when you feel lighter, you can almost start to feel that you are floating. So when you begin to experience that you are floating, you can actually catch hold of different elements around you, which are at little, little distances. So the whole idea that we start identifying ourselves with an image. So the self image begins to become the obstacle to pursue anything that we like. My second point of suggestion as a methodology would be no goals, only habits. In order to achieve higher goals, we often see that we continue to, we do not continue to achieve those things just because we are not able to follow the habits regularly. So what ideally could be done is you break the larger goals into smaller goals and those smaller goals could be so small that it only transforms into habits. So this kind of unloads the performance pressure from you. So for example, if you want to get into starting a new habit, what you need to do is you pick up a new place and you pick up a new time to perform that activity. Every time you go into that place at that particular time, the memory of beginning, starting to begin that new habit will occur. And if you can do that consistently, you will not realize that the results or the goals will only become a byproduct. So this is something that I've tried to incorporate in, in my life. For example, I have a kid who is six year old. Every time I go and drop my kid, I ensure that before uh, starting my next, next task, I sit for 20 minutes and play my flute music and, and tabla. So, so this is something that I've been able to do consistently. So every time in the morning, the moment it is 8.45 a.m., I begin to remember that I, that, that I need to sit to play music. So now it got into the habit of doing it because I decided the place and the time to start this habit. I was always wanting to start the habit of reading, but I always thought that there is no time. And I started identifying what is the time that I can read. And I decided that before going to the bed, I have 15 to 20 minutes when I'm almost not doing anything. So I thought, this is the time when I can read one page every day. And I started this habit a couple of years ago and I could successfully today finish seven to eight books by following this smallest of the atomic habit. Lastly, time management. Another form of inspiration as an architect was when we were reading about Lee Kabuzier, the architect who designed the city of Chandigarh. We often heard that architect Corbusier would start his office post lunch and the pre-lunch time would always be invested in a painting. And this is something that he did regularly and you can actually see the inferences of his habit of painting into architecture. Then identifying space for dual tasks. Human minds are meant to do multiple things at the same time. So 
I made a habit that what are the things that I can do in parallel to each other. So when I walk in the morning as a regular ritual, I try and sing musical patterns. You know, so again questioning why should only one thing be done at one time. Because while a wholesome experience is an absolute focus, but a heightened experience can be achieved by layering the experience. It's like in music, a single beat, if repeated, initiates a rhythm, and it is called a symphony. But if more instruments are added, then the symphony can be orchestrated, which can lead to a higher form of experience, keeping the cyclical pattern the same. It's like building upon an abstract thought. Likewise, I chose to sing musical patterns, as I explained. So these are some of the things that I developed. I will take a break again, and I'm almost towards the conclusion of my talk. Before I do that, I would now like to lay emphasis on the non-sequential method of practicing. On my, on my screen, you can see a beautiful painting of Van Gogh, right? Now, I would like to share that there's a book that I read recently. It's called Ways of Seeing by John Berger. So John Berger in this book uh, does an experiment. And the experiment goes like this. John Berger shared an image of Van Gogh's painting. Van Gogh is a Dutch artist and one of the celebrated artists of the modern times. So he shared a painting with his students and he asked every student to create an image in their heads. So when they saw this image of this beautiful painting, everybody saw the landscape, the fields and the flying birds and the sky and the blue. And they said, this looks a very happy painting. And it, some, somebody said it's joyful. Somebody said it's delightful. After knowing the interpretations, John Berger made a statement. He said, I want to tell you all that this painting by Van Gogh was the last painting of his life before he killed himself. And he then asked his students to make their interpretations once again. And believe you or not, the interpretation after listening to this statement completely changed. It almost started horrifying the students and the interpretations that came in showed a lot of fear. Now, this made me understand that the meaning of an image changes just before, what you see just before or after the image or listen to it. It means the human mind is deeply affected by what you experience immediately before or after. So, um, it becomes so very important, likewise, to indulge into more than one uh, form of practice. You know, it is like this. Now, this is something that I will just uh, narrate as a form of experience. Whenever you are into a problem-solving technique and uh, you are trying basically uh, to find a solution and you are continuously thinking and thinking and thinking, immediately if you stop thinking and move on to a different task, so the time that you have between switching from one task to the other has some impact onto the task that you are going to switch on to next. So what happens is the following task will be an evolved result. After finishing the second task, when you go back to the original task of solution finding, you will see you begin to arrive at the result much faster because now you are looking at the first problem solving task from a very different perspective. And you get hints and clues, how do you arrive at that center? So this was something very interesting that I wanted to share. Two, two minutes. OK, sir. So these were my concluding remarks. Um, the last point is basically the method of repetition and reflection. Uh, which is so very important in learning a craft. Uh, repetition is basically, the idea of repetition is to get hold on the technique, which you have to do continuously. 
but in this process of repetition one tends to also repeat few things which are done incorrectly so that is why they say it is also important to reflect on what you are repeating so the moment you reflect it is basically trying to question what you have been repeating this is something that theory and practice of a craft also talk about because every craft needs to have a theory which contradicts the practice and the practice contradicts the theory concluding i would like to say if you want to master any form of art it is important that you embrace the boredom of the craft there is a very long process which is almost very boring but only if you embrace it that you can sustain the craft and lastly i want to say that god has got gift uh, my apologies for the incorrect uh, spelling of gift god has got gift for everybody sometimes some receive gifts with a lot of layerings on the top and some receive the gifts with a few layerings it is only for people who keep on unwrapping god's gift that they find the gift the ones who do not they do not receive the gift so my suggestion is please keep unwrapping the gift that has been been given to you by god one day you find the gift so here i conclude my uh, presentation no you can play the tune so i will now be playing a two minute uh, flute recital and then i will uh, open up the house for discussions and discourse i will now be playing rag bass alap and a bandish this is about uh, all that i have to present today i will request dr bhatti to uh, extend this further now the 
honored participants in the audience are welcome to ask questions, uh, uh, make comments, uh, make some additions to what he has said. I think it's a very brilliant, very, very brilliant uh, presentation mm -hmm. and very authentic because it comes from his own personal experience. Thank you, it's sir. Not bookish. You can ask question. There is no sequence set. Any, anyone can start. Yeah, Aman, I would like to congratulate you on this uh, wonderful presentation. Which Thank actually, you, Yeah, which is actually a result of uh, what you have been practicing and experiencing. Over the years, a lot of maturity, you know, the way you have integrated uh, in all the areas in which you are engaged. Based on that, that uh, I think each one of the has more like you know what gets me to learn how to unwrap and uh, yeah. with you on that and I think that uh, uh, there's no there's really no age to you know learn anything or discover anything new. You know sometimes you might it might just hold you back that okay, oh now I'm this uh, at this age, oh how can I try something new? How can I, you know, learn something new? People might say something, something like that might hold you back. But I feel uh, each day uh, is, a, is a new opportunity to discover yourself. And um, when you have uh, uh, various interests in life, like if you're just pursuing one uh, profession or career over the years, year after year, and not uh, uh, engaging yourself in anything else. I think life can become uh, pretty, it can become quite uh, monotonous and can become quite boring. But when you have uh, uh, various interests, uh, uh, you know, then that can bring in a lot of, uh, in, uh, can enrich your life. And uh, it also is kind of, uh, uh, you know, you are able to break away from that day-to-day -day boredom. And uh, like you said, you know, for each, um, what I liked about what you said was, was that uh, we need to have some discipline because otherwise we may be having a lot of talent, but maybe we're not really sitting down to practice them so that uh, we can hone our skills and we can, you know, reach a, uh, you know, maybe improve uh, as time goes by. So, you know, like you said, we need to uh, incorporate Operated in our day-to-day -day life, like you know, set aside a time that when I will do, you know, when I will practice one craft, or you know, when I will uh, do something else. But sometimes I think uh, what we can also do is being experimented can also sometimes be a, a roadblock to creativity. Sometimes you might just get bored. You know, I don't want to do this. It's okay, I think, not to do it for a while. Give it a break and then come back. Because then, uh, uh, you know, you can come back with some new ideas and some, uh, you know, uh, more, um, maybe you can uh, create something new and something uh, more interesting and beautiful. So I agree with you that uh, we should try to develop a couple of interests which make our life uh, more meaningful, uh, more creative, and uh, more you know, uh, fulfilling and, and enriched. So that would, that's how I would like to Thank you, it. thank you, Navita, for these beautiful additions to what he has said. Professor Agarwal would like to say something because he initiated a few new things which we have used. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Bhatti, and good evening, everybody. Good evening, sir. I like the, the lecture and I congratulate Mr. Aman Sohal for his very Thank interesting you. talk. And this flute recital came as a bonus. <laughs> so we enjoyed this evening. 
uh, your talk as well as a uh, few recited. Now, one thing I want to tell you, I have just one comment here. In the past, people worked alone, but now interdisciplinary research is preferred. And those who work in team, and they, they find application of their work in other areas, their research is appreciated more. So this is the time when there is an emphasis on the interdisciplinary approach. And what I mean to say is, I give you two examples only. Kepler conjectured that this, uh, these planets revolve around the sun in elliptical cups. And Newton proved it mathematically. So now you see the collaboration of two genius, one Kepler and the other Newton. And this is considered to be one of the best uh, result of the human that brain. The planets revolve around the sun in little curves. When I was watching, one day I was watching the television news and they said that our Mangalyan has entered into its final elliptical orbit. So I was so much delighted because at that time I remember Kepler and Newton. It was because of their research that today we are able to reach to moon and, and uh, Mangal also. That. So this type of the research collaboration between different area so what I feel that one should not leave his main area, but he should branch out to other area. And he should give respect to other people, experts in other area, and get benefit of their knowledge and, and benefit them from your knowledge also. So they will, be, they will be benefited from your knowledge and you should benefit from their knowledge. This is the way how we learn and we expand, we branch out to many areas and uh, you have very rightly said this thing that if you work in only one area then people will not like that work so much. Only those people who are working in that particular area they will like your work. But when you connect your work with other areas also so many people would like your work. This, is, this was my one uh, comment on your talk, where it is uh, true that uh, today uh, there is more emphasis on this side, interdisciplinary approach. Very good, very good comment. Incidentally, uh, as you may have noticed, Herman tried to connect architecture, writing architecture with mind. That if you if you play or sing notes separately, they tend to compartmentalize the composition. But if you drag one note to the other, which is mean, the space becomes continual. And Wright said that space is continual becoming. I, I think uh, Professor Agarwal is right when he says that you are not quite sure when you are doing all these things that your work can benefit someone else. After all, the scope that we set is our, of our own doing. I have discovered that the scope that which we set for a single subject or a discipline is out of my own lack of understanding or lack of capacity for handling more jobs than work. But if you try, you will find that it's an amazing thing that a human being can do so much that even a particular individual doesn't know how much is this scope. Uh, more, more comments or uh, questions? Sharma sir. No, yeah. Namaskar, Bhatti sir. And uh, uh, Amanji, I am much congratulated you for your wonderful talk, the presentation. presentation. Uh, it was quite pointed. And the dash of music made it more interesting. And uh, more so, it was uh, not bookish in nature. It was from your personal experience that made it more meaningful. So, age on your side, I think you can do wonders in your coming years. No problem. Thank you, sir. So, Thank you. It was really refreshing also. 
So I really enjoyed it very much. So nothing much to say about it. But the thing is, ki your presentation was quite uh, pointed. That was the main thing. Thank and uh, without beating about the bush, <laughs> you were quite uh, pointed. So wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. So nice of you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm grateful. We have Arun Bansal also somewhere. He was handling two jobs, respecting Aman's presentation. He is already handling two jobs. I'm not sure whether he's available for a comment or not. If that be the end, uh, let us say that it was a wonderful experience. And the key point is that each one is a gifted individual. The reason is simple. God is creator. Gurbani mein kehte na, karta purak. He is a creator, primal person. So whatever he creates has creativity within it. It is for you to discover. No one else can tell you. Whoever, not the least the TV gurus. So I, I think if you take charge of your life and spare some time, if not more, at least five minutes every day, all alone, you will be given. You will you will be amazed to know that you are discovering yourself by and by. And once you hit that point, creativity will be awakened and then it has no end. This I've experienced myself. There is so much of creativity within me that I can't even manage it. This is my experience. I, I think all of you have that. Because God is not partisan. He gives it to everyone. Uh, if you see some people who are handicapped or something like that, you will discover that they have a brain spirit to yours. Because with just one brain, not the body, they can do anything. Stephen Hawking was one example. There are many others. So don't worry the kind of body that you have been given. If it is all healthy, you should be grateful to God. If it is not healthy, still grateful and use the maximum to see how far you can go. And there is no limit to that. Wonderful seeing you all and for your inputs and the brilliant exposition. Aman, we wish you all the well. Thank you, sir. Uh, I am really happy to be uh, sharing my thoughts here. Now, these thoughts that I shared today were hanging in my head for many, many years. And today, having spoken at First Friday Forum, I I feel that I have received validation from experts like Dr. Bhatti and other people uh, listening to me. This has given me enough boost to continue practicing uh, the interests that I have developed and also not stop searching for more from within. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.